This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Automakers in the American market are counting on the U.S. government to provide more subsidies to consumers to buy electric cars. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. Those subsidies were part of a bigger package championed by the Biden administration called Build Back Better. But the administration lost a key vote yesterday when Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat of West Virginia, said he would not support the plan. Without Manchin, President Biden does not have the votes to enact the legislation. General Motors and Tesla have already run out of the $7,500 tax credits. Ford and Toyota will run out of them next year. Maybe a new round of EV subsidies will resurface in a separate bill next year, but for now, it looks like they're dead in the water. We're getting a better idea of why CEO Dan Ammon was fired at GM's cruise unit, and yes, he was fired. But it's all about money and control. Bloomberg reports that Ammon wanted to take Cruise public and keep it independent from General Motors. But GM CEO Mary Barra wants to keep Cruise in-house and have it develop autonomous technology for GM's vehicle brands. She also wants GM to have its own robo-taxi service. GM bought Cruise for a billion dollars in 2016. And today, based on the funding it's raised, Cruise is worth $30 billion. Dan Ammon would have made tens of millions of dollars if Cruz went public, but this move leaves no doubt that Mary Barra is the one calling the shots. Okay, we've never seen this before. Toyota is opening up its proving grounds in Arizona to anyone who wants to use it. The facility opened in 1993 and Toyota uses it for vehicle testing and development. While automakers sometimes open up their proving grounds to other companies, they don't open them up to direct competitors. Toyota says it's doing this to help advance mobility for all, but we think it's more about money. Costs a lot of money to operate a proving ground, and by leasing it out to others, Toyota is turning it from a fixed cost into a revenue-generating asset. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Nikola is not dead. It just delivered its first battery electric semi-trucks, called the Tray, to Total Transportation Services in Southern California. Two trucks will be tested at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. The Trey BEV has a range of 350 miles. In the future, two fuel cell powered versions will be added to the pilot test. Those trucks will have ranges of 500 miles. Once the pilot test is complete, 30 Trey BEVs will be added to Total Transportation's fleet in 2022 and 70 fuel cell trucks in 2023. Nikola and Iveco also signed a deal with the Hamburg Port Authority in Germany to deliver 25 Trey BEVs throughout 2022. So while its controversial founder Trevor Milton is long gone, Nikola keeps on rolling. And speaking of EV pilot projects, Audi is about to open its first EV charging hub in Nuremberg, Germany. It features a lounge area where owners can wait while their car is charging up, since it can take 20 to 30 minutes to get an 80% charge. The hub has six charging points with up to 320 kilowatts of power, which users can reserve with an app and cost 31 cents per kilowatt hour. The hub, which opens to customers of any brand on December 23rd, is aimed at EV owners in urban areas who can't charge at home. And in other EV charging news, Ford is launching a new service for customers in California to opt into carbon neutral charging at home. Owners join through the Ford Pass app, which then automatically tracks the amount of electricity used while charging at home. Ford then buys or generates an equivalent amount of renewable energy certificates, which record the generation of u- and usage of green energy. Ford then sends that to the California Air Resources Board to ensure all home charging is matched 
with zero carbon electricity. The program is available to all Ford BEV and plug-in hybrid owners in California. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Chinese EV startup NIO introduced its newest model, an all-electric mid-size sedan called the ET5. Its steel and aluminum body was styled similar to its ET7 sedan, which launches early next year in China. And note how designers did a pretty good job of integrating the autonomous sensors at the top of the windshield. NEO's system allows for automated highway and urban driving, parking, and battery swapping. We don't get a real great look at the interior here, but NEO says the digital cockpit features both augmented and virtual reality technology. The ET5 will have three battery sizes available, 75 kilowatt hours, 100, and 150 kilowatt hours. Those will provide ranges between 550 and 1,000 kilometers, or 341 to 621 miles, based on the China test cycle, which is similar to WLTP. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour can be done in 4.3 seconds. The ET5 starts as low as about $40,500, or roughly, 36,000 euros if you rent the battery pack instead of buying it. Otherwise, you can add another 11 grand or 9,700 euros to the price tag. Deliveries of the new sedan start in September of next year. Giant German supplier ZF is showing off the benefits of its steer-by-wire system. It features redundant battery and communication networks, and with no physical connection between the wheel and steering gear, the feel, steering ratio, and effort can be adjusted with software. For example, a tight turn that might normally require you to cross your hands over one another can be done in one motion. And that's going to be great for new steering wheel shapes like Tesla's yoke, which can be difficult to use. A system like this will also help enable level 4 autonomous driving, and it can clear up room for an AV system with a retractable steering wheel. ZF says it can even integrate rear steering systems as well as braking and chassis functions. Tires with low rolling resistance can help hybrids get better fuel economy, but Consumer Reports says using those tires result in longer braking distances. It says the hybrid versions of the Hyundai Sonata and Chrysler Pacifica take eight feet longer to come to a stop in a 60 to zero mile an hour test. A Toyota Camry hybrid takes 12 feet longer. Consumer Reports compared braking distances of those cars to their gasoline-only versions that do not have low rolling resistance tires. CR says you're better off with a car that stops in a shorter distance, even if that means giving up a few miles to the gallon. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.